safe. Pylons. Eights on pylons? Now, I know what many of you may be thinking. Aren't pylons just those things used in air races? Well, yes. But before getting ahead of ourselves, we'll have to define a few things. For those wanting to skim at 50 feet AGL doing 400 knots, that's not this maneuver and we're not going there. And for those who don't want to fly at 50 feet AGL at any knots, don't worry, we're not going there. So what are eights on pylons? It does involve the figure eight and flying it will be dependent upon maintaining something called the pivotal altitude around two ground reference points or the pylons. That's it. Accomplishing this maneuver, however, requires a few more layers of detail and discipline. The only ground reference maneuver listed in the commercial PTS, eights on pylons are also one of the most challenging. Perfecting this maneuver will clearly demonstrate mastery of the aircraft. And unlike many of the ground reference maneuvers pilots are probably familiar with, eights on pylons are performed without regard to radius or maintaining a constant altitude. The concept of pivotal altitude is the key. And while the planning portion of this maneuver is helpful, the ultimate goal of subconscious aircraft control and coordination drive this maneuver's inclusion as a required commercial pilot maneuver. The objective of practicing and performing the eights on pylons maneuver is to develop the ability to maneuver the airplane accurately while dividing attention between the flight path and selected pylons on the ground. Before beginning eights on pylons, a pilot should understand what a pylon turn actually is. Early aviators noticed that at altitude, when turning, the wing appears to move rearward compared to looking at a point on the ground. At low altitudes, this effect reverses and the wing appears to move forward of any ground references. A point exists then where the wing or reference on the aircraft remains stationary compared to a ground reference point. This point is called the pivotal altitude. With this idea in mind, early aviators pioneered the pylon turn in air racing. At pivotal altitude, a racer could guarantee they didn't cross over the pylon by simply placing a reference on the pylon. This would work for any high performance turn at any bank angle, if at pivotal altitude. Ironically, this tactic was quickly abandoned as technology, even in the 1930s, led to faster and faster racers. The pivotal altitude is dependent upon speed. Higher speed equals a higher pivotal altitude. The actual turns then in modern air racing are very much around the pylons. Other uses of the pylon turn include use as a delivery method for mail and packages, as well as a stabilizing maneuver for ground support gunships. The AC-47 gunship pioneered this use of the pylon turn in Vietnam, which is still in use today by the AC-130 Spooky. The commercial maneuver's eights on pylons takes the concept of a pylon turn to the next level by creating a figure eight in the sky around two pylons chosen by the pilot. To make this maneuver predictable and easier to fly, choosing the pylons and initial orientation is an important skill unto itself to develop. Truly. This is the purpose of all commercial maneuvers, to plan and execute while demonstrating mastery of the aircraft. Before flying, the pilot must complete the important key step of calculating pivotal altitude. This altitude can be found by using a relatively simple equation, ground speed in knots squared divided by 11.3. This number is pivotal altitude in feet AGL. Adding the local field elevation at the practice area yields the MSL pivotal altitude. Next, the pilot needs to use this equation to estimate the starting pivotal altitude. Wind will need to be estimated using a local METAR and the nearest winds aloft forecast. Because pivotal altitude is usually relatively low, the pilot will need to estimate somewhere around 1,000 feet AGL. With this information, the pilot can estimate maximum and minimum pivotal altitudes expected during the eight on pylons. This maneuver will be entered close to a 30 degree angle off the line between the pylons. This is about 60 degrees compared to the downwind. For each 10 knots of wind, add about five knots to your true airspeed to estimate ground speed for this entry. The starting airspeed for the Cessna 172 is 95 knots. As an example, if you have a 20 knot wind, you can estimate that your starting ground speed will be 105 knots. 
The pivotal altitude would be about 975 feet AGL. The MSL altitude would be calculated by adding the practice area elevation, in this case let's say 900 feet MSL, for a total MSL pivotal starting altitude of about 1880 feet on the altimeter. The minimum pivotal altitude through the maneuver would be calculated using an estimated ground speed of 75 knots. Using the equations would then yield a minimum altitude of 498 feet AGL. Again, add the practice area elevation of about 900 feet MSL for a total MSL minimum pivotal altitude of about 1400 feet on the altimeter. If flown correctly, you will never reach this low of an altitude nor ever a ground speed that slow. The reasons for that will be explored in the execution section. Remember, these altitudes are estimates but are used as a target envelope which the pilot can reference during the maneuver. Actual wind conditions vary and if the entry angle is not as calculated, then the pivotal altitude can change slightly. With the pre-flight portion of the planning complete, the pilot in flight is tasked with finding a suitable area to complete the maneuver. Numerous considerations for this maneuver include noise abatement near populated areas, obstruction clearance, suitable area for an emergency landing, just in case, and finally, suitable pylons. Descend to the calculated pivotal altitude and complete two 90-degree clearing turns. Adjust power and trim to maintain 95 knots indicated airspeed. While setting up the aircraft, be vigilant for an area with good pylons. When selecting pylons, the pilot must consider proper wind alignment. Suitable pylons are landmarks that are spaced approximately one half to one mile apart and are perpendicular to the wind. Many UND Aerospace instructors, as well as myself, agreed that about three quarters of a mile works well for the Cessna 172. If too much space exists between pylons, the pilot must fly for extended periods of time straight and level. Previous versions of the PTS used to mention holding level for three to five seconds between rolling level from one pylon to rolling on to the next. While not on the current PTS requirement, this guideline is still useful and helpful for successful completion of the maneuver. If a pilot is lucky enough to train and practice in an area gridded by section lines, the possibilities for good pylons are endless. Take a standard one mile road grid with half mile section lines intersecting it. By picking any combination of road and section line within this grid, a pilot finds pylons that are at a 90 degree angle to the wind. Do not limit the pylons to those in line simply with cardinal headings because very rarely will this work out exactly. Pilots without the benefit of gridded farmland will have to be more creative with finding prominent and recognizable points on the ground to use as pylons. All pilots, no matter their preferred geographic references, must demonstrate vigilance, attention, and ultimately good situational awareness during this maneuver to avoid confusing or losing the two pylons chosen. And don't forget to be a good neighbor and avoid choosing a house or circling over noise-sensitive areas. When choosing these pylons in flight, I recommend flying upwind or crosswind looking downwind to scan and select the pylons. This allows the pilot time to scan the area near the pylons and clear the area of traffic while placing the aircraft in a position to make a simple turn to enter the maneuver with the wind. Apart from selecting these pylons, the pilot has to know what will be used as the aim or reference point on the aircraft. The pilot will need a line of sight reference parallel with the lateral axis. For a high wing aircraft like the Cessna 172, looking through the area a few inches below and behind the leading edge wingtip works well. In low wing aircraft, a reference slightly above and aft of the leading edge is suitable. When using this reference, do not stare at the wingtip, but through it, focusing on the pylon itself. The purpose of this reference is to place a line extending from the lateral axis right on the pylon. This is where the tethered explanation comes from. The aircraft appears to fly as though a straight, taut string extends from the outside wingtip, touching the inside wing and unbroken to the pylon. Remember, having this reference line on the pylon demonstrates pivotal altitude. At no point should the pilot attempt to track a constant radius or maintain a constant bank through this maneuver.
With pylon selected, a good entry establishes the aircraft and pilot in an excellent position to perform the maneuver well. Do not just fly a 45 degree downwind entry. Eights on pylons require more planning and finesse than the strict 45. The pilot will need to cross directly between the pylons to place himself in a position to hit the PTS bank of 30 to 40 degrees during the maneuver. The first turn on each pylon, the turn into the wind, is the best and most predictable position to place this. The pilot will cross directly between the pylons while aiming for a point abeam the pylon at about a quarter mile away from the pylon. It is customary and generally easier to place the pylon on the pilot side of the aircraft for the first turn. If this assumption is made, the pylon will be on the left with the wind quartering from the left. Fly coordinated and in a crab to the anticipated point where the turn will begin. Patience is required as the pylon nears the leading edge of the wing. Wait until the reference point is nearly on top of the pylon and then bank in, putting the reference point on the pylon with coordinated use of controls. The bank at this point should be at the steepest point here, 30 to 40 degrees according to the commercial PTS. This turn begins at the highest ground speed and therefore the highest pivotal altitude. Let the aircraft settle a little and gauge the pylon for the descent rate you will need as the airplane turns into the headwind. Do not dive into the turn. Anticipating where we're going to roll onto the pylon, put the wing on it. Boom, then we're good to go. Now we are looking for generally a reference point that's going to be basically your eye line to the pylon. So as we go into the wind, we should anticipate that we are going to need to descend, so I have a slight descent set up. Now, anytime we make these adjustments, make sure we're also looking forward as well, both to gauge how much pitch are we actually adjusting. By looking at a point that's with our lateral axis, it's very easy to over control. Should reach our lowest altitude going into the headwind. As we cross over, we can anticipate a slight climb, so I've already started initiating a little bit of back pressure. For pitch guidance specifically, as the pylon appears to move forward, forward pressure is needed. The aircraft was slightly above pivotal altitude. If the pylon appears to move rearward, the aircraft is slightly below pivotal altitude and needs to climb. These pitch adjustments will actually serve as a double correction. Forward pressure, pitching down, descends towards the pivotal altitude while the increased speed raises it. The pitch up causes a climb towards the pivotal altitude while also decreasing speed and lowering the pivotal altitude towards the aircraft. As the turn progresses, the pilot will need to maintain coordination as bank is adjusted to maintain what appears to be vertical deviation, the pylon moving up and down in relation to the reference line and they must adjust pitch if the pylon appears in front of the reference line or behind it. Remember though, at no point should power be adjusted during the maneuver except to recover from the maneuver at its completion or for safety reasons such as traffic. As the aircraft carves around the apex of the turn, pitch will have to increase as the headwind component decreases. Anticipate this by gauging and planning for the pylon to move rearward as you transition to a crosswind point in the maneuver. Now as we come through this last part, as we start our climb, you're going to want to start looking for that second pylon. That way we can anticipate when to roll off and put us in position while also anticipating for the crab. So there's our point. I see the second one's in sight. We're back up to our higher pivotal altitude and on speed. Now as we're flying level for a second, it's not a bad idea just to kind of glance for traffic, uh, just in case there's anyone else in the area. Well, the second one, if it's off your right and you're from the left seat, you have to anticipate when it's going to cut through. Yeah, this one, we might be a little close. We'll see what happens. Roll it right on. That pylon's looking good. This is probably the trickier of the two because you really do have to anticipate. You can't see the exact pylon until you roll into it. So you're going to have to use some references that might be a little bit further out from the pylon itself. That's where those section lines, at least in this part of the country, really help out. By making our adjustments, looking around for traffic, and again, as we adjust, it's not a bad idea to scan the horizon for that small adjustment as well. And then gauging the second pylon. Now from here, we completed our eight. So if we want, we could exit. Or we do as many turns as specified by the CFI. When practicing, if you have two good pylons picked out, it's not bad to do a few more than, than one turn around each pylon. That gives you some good practice. And again, it's a safe area you've already determined and have been using. You have the pylons ready to go. 
The standard for the 8s on pylons maneuver, as listed in the commercial pilot PTS, requires that the pilot exhibits knowledge of the elements related to 8s on pylons, determines the approximate pivotal altitude, selects suitable pylons that will permit straight and level flight between the pylons, enters the maneuver at the appropriate altitude and airspeed and at a bank angle of approximately 30 to 40 degrees at the steepest point, applies the necessary corrections so that the line of sight reference line remains on the pylon, divides attention between accurate coordinated airplane control and outside visual references, holds the pylon using appropriate pivotal altitude avoiding slips and skids. Remember, the key to good eights on pylons is anticipation, smoothness, and good control coordination. Respond to how the pylon moves compared to your reference and do not over control. Ultimately, flying a great eight on pylon comes down to controlling the aircraft without overthinking things. The eights on pylons maneuver offers new challenges to commercial pilot applicants that aren't found in other ground reference maneuvers. Perfecting this maneuver really demonstrates mastery of the aircraft through the ability to plan, coordinate, and execute a maneuver that requires a high degree of subconscious aircraft control and division of attention. Maintain a different kind of altitude, pivotal altitude. And remember, for you in the aerospace, have fun, fly safe.